Photoperoxysmal response is defined as the appearance of epileptiform activity in response to photic stimulation or in response to stimulation with light. In this brief tutorial, I will not be able to go in an extensive detail about photoperoxysmal response, but what we are going to do is I'm going to show you some samples of EEGs with photoperoxysmal response. I'll provide you with some pearls and uh, this will be a brief tutorial. If you have any questions, you can leave that in the comments. So let's get started here. So just a brief introduction about EEG. EEG uh, basically records the excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. We amplify the signal from the brain approximately a million times so that it's that we are able to see it on the monitor here. The electrodes are placed in a certain distribution that we call a 1020 system. So I'm not going to, I have had tutorial, uh, a previous tutorial on 1020 system, and you can review that. So the channels here, the channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. Channels that end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain. And channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. These green lines are separated by one second. So I hope that you've seen some of the previous tutorials and you have some idea what the EEG signals are about. What we see here, something to note here, that in the occipital head region, so P3, O1, and P4, O2, if you look over here, you can see the posterior dominant alpha rhythm here. So this is the alpha rhythm. This is in the left side you do have some alpha rhythm on the right side right here. This whole artifact, this is a muscle artifact, swallowing artifact most likely. So you see muscle artifact in multiple channels, which most likely is swallowing artifact. What you see here, these are eye blink artifacts. Okay, let's move on to the next page here. At the bottom of the EEG, the red lines tell you that this person is undergoing photic stimulation. So photic stimulation or stimulation by flashing lights is a part of the procedure of the EEG. This big deflection here tells you that the eyes are closed here. You see, start seeing some fast activity in the background here. And you wonder if this person has a photoperoxysmal response or sensitivity to flashing lights. You can count the number of stimulations, photic stimulation that are being used. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. And then you see in the occipital head region, there are ten waves that correspond with the flashing lights. This is called a photic driving response and which is normal. Now what you see here is the flash rate has been increased here. And this discharge you see some fast frequencies in a generalized distribution with some spikes. We'll change the gain of this and you can see there is some change in here. This is what we call the photoperoxysmal response. It tells you that a person is sensitive to flashing lights. Uh, in approximately 15% of patients with generalized epilepsies, and approximately 2% of individuals with focal onset seizures, you can see photosensitive changes on the EG. This is another page from the same patient and you see the photoproximal response. I will give you some better examples with higher amplitude spike and wave it just in a few, uh, after a few slides here. These are all examples of as soon as you start the st stimulation, you see the change on the EEG right here. Now, this is an 18-year-old who was uh, referred to the epilepsy clinic with a single seizure. You can see a very nice posterior dominant alpha rhythm here. The heart rate varies anywhere from 62 to 73 or 75 beats per minute. And when you start the photic stimulation here, you have the photoperoxysmal response. If somebody has, somebody presents to your clinic with seizures, I mean, that is one question you want to ask, that 
have your seizures ever been triggered by uh, flashing lights? Have those ever been triggered by playing video games or go or driving through the sun where light is flickering through the trees? If that is the case, you can be suspicious that this individual has photosensitive uh, epilepsy. This is another example. This is a muscle artifact here. This whole for four seconds, you see a photoperoxysmal response. Photoperoxysmal response comes in different shapes and sizes. You don't always see a very clear spike in wave discharge. Sometimes what you see is fast frequencies overriding uh, a slow background. Let's see here. Uh, so we saw, we looked through this one and this one. So this is another person. This is way more robust. On photic stimulation, the patient started reporting feeling uncomfortable. You can see a lot of discharges here. Uh, testing the patient sometimes becomes uh, challenging. If you have a strong suspicion that this person has photosensitive epilepsy, uh, b before initiating the flashing lights, you can ask the patient to start counting backwards from 100, and you may see a pause as the, pay, as the photic stimulation starts provoking <coughs> EG changes. This is the same page at lower gain, so you're able to appreciate some of the spikes that are in the background. This is a, a little bit more robust response. You can see very clearly appreciate the uh, significant slowing with spike and wave discharges, which are frontally dominant, highest highest amplitude in the frontal head region uh, that you uh, see with uh, flashing lights. Now keep in mind that there are individuals who do not have a history of epilepsy, but they do have a photosensitive response or photoproxysmal response on the EG. Uh, withdrawal from benzodiazepines, withdrawal from alcohol, can also produce a photoperoxysmal response. If you record EEGs in siblings of individuals who have photoperoxysmal response, some in some cases you will be able to find photoperoxysmal response without any history of epilepsy, which suggests that photoperoxysmal response may also have a genetic predisposition. Let's look at the next page here. So this is the previous EEG at a lower uh, magnification, uh, not lower magnification, but at a lower gain. This is another person with a lots of 24-year-old with a single generalized tonic-clonic seizure and a very profound photoperoxysmal response on the EEG. My patients who have photoperoxysmal response, I suggest that they consider using sunglasses with Polaroid lenses which can help cut down the glare or cut down the reflections, which in some cases may provoke a seizure. This is the previous CG at a lower gain. This is a 19-year-old with negative myoclonus. So negative myoclonus is where patients, instead of jerking outwards, they lose their tone and things, all of a sudden it seems that things drop out of their hands. Sometimes if they are standing, their knees will buckle and they may fall down. So this is an individual with a negative myoclonus. This is yet another example. So in summary, photoperoxysmal response basically tells you that a person is photosensitive. Photosensitive means sensitive to light. Many times the photosensitive response is only seen at a certain frequency. So if a person has photoperoxysmal response at 16 hertz, meaning at 16 flashes per second, it does not mean that you will see a similar response at 10 hertz or 8 hertz. Certain conditions such as ceroid lipofusinosis has a specific response at a very low frequency such as one flash per second. Uh, there are certain medications that help a person who has photosensitive response I'm not going to go into that detail. If you are a patient with a photoproxysmal response or sensitivity to light, you may want to discuss that with your uh, neurologist. I think I will end here. Thank you for your attention, and I hope to see you at a future tutorial. Thank you.